Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, things I've learned and observed while coaching Brittany over the last year and a half or so. And it's uh, stuff that could be useful for training programming for women who are strength training. So uh, let me put on my plus five head of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit and uh, let's talk about this. All right, um, normally I tell people that for the most part, men and women don't need to train differently. Uh, women just need to understand they're not gonna gain muscle or strength as quickly, particularly in their upper body as men. Uh, that women don't need to worry about looking manly unless they start using male hormones. Uh, so something that always needs to be gotten out of the way first. Uh, women are afraid of bulking up, but then when they see women who've been training really hard for three or four years who are completely drug free, who really are, and there are plenty of them out there, uh, it becomes apparent they don't look anything like uh, the women that women are scared of looking like. Uh, a point that has to be made, and again, to stay away from the whole bodybuilding scene with this, because all these female bodybuilders claim to be natural, but they're actually not. And if they look even slightly manly, they're on hormones. They're on male hormones, so of course you're going to look manly. Now, that being said, usually there aren't many differences in men and women other than women need usually slower progression rates, particularly for upper body exercises, but really that can still be worked off of a percentage system. So if you're running block periodization, something like my intermediate off-season program, which is a standard block periodization, we can use this as a perfect example. Uh, the progression patterns are okay because they're starting at a much lower percentage most likely. You just aren't going to find women starting a program like that who are repping 200 pounds on the bench press. Let's be realistic here. Uh, so it's not like they're going to see large jumps when you start having 5% increases. Uh, so ultimately it kind of handles itself there because they're never going to be as strong pound for pound, particularly upper body lifts. So you can program accordingly. You can still work off of a percentage system uh, to handle the progression. So. The issue we run into, again, let's take something like that program, and I'll probably link it down below just as a reference, uh, the video and everything that has it in there, and it has all of it written out underneath it. But the issue we run into is when we start doing these mesocycles. You know, you start trying to run three-week progression blocks, and that works amazingly well for male athletes. It has produced many champions in many different sports. It needed strength, power, speed, all of that stuff. Uh, standard block periodization is fantastic for serious athletes. The problem we run into, and again, something I've noticed training Brittany uh, day in, day out, one of the biggest issues we run into is women's monthly cycle. And so you've got to look at that and go, okay, well, plenty of women have this, so obviously they train around it and still become world champions. So how would I personally address this issue? Um, I would address this by not running things in 12-week blocks anymore, you know, four sets of three-week blocks. For most women, you've got to remember uh, their cycle runs on either a 21 to 35 day range and the average is 28. Now if you have anyone who's near the 28 or, or anything close to that, even if they end up being a little longer, you can program around this. And here's the thing. In my experience, women's performance drops during this week. The week of their cycle, it is very difficult to push them to their limits. Their strength, neural efficiency, everything tends to be a little bit lower. Uh, and obviously, you know, what you really don't want to have happen is to have a competition day happen on any sort of competition where their period's going because it can be a problem. Uh, it can be worked around, but it is going to affect performance. And so what I find, uh, having worked with her, you almost need many deload weeks to just focus on skills on those days. So the question becomes, how do we make this become not a disadvantage? If you have to have a week every single month to where your athlete is training lighter, they're training lighter uh, to many people that say okay that's got to be a disadvantage and I would say it doesn't have to be a disadvantage meaning it doesn't have to work against uh, female athletes and female lifters the issue becomes can we make it an advantage because it's unavoidable because all it really does is limit uh, the variety in your training programming it, it cuts a lot of that down because you know that you can't push them for 12 weeks straight and then have them deload but you can push them for three week blocks and have them overreach slightly and then deload. So what I would recommend with something like this, let's say we wanted to take a woman who's on a 28 day cycle and run my intermediate program. We have these three week blocks. Well, we could totally use these three week blocks to overreach. We can absolutely have them overreach in these three week blocks. 
and you can do that by making sure that they grind out just a little more so if they have anything left in the tank on the third week because normally you would look at a system like that and say you finish uh, the third week with five sets of ten with five sets of ten you could always increase the weight slightly on them on that meaning if we know that we have a deload week coming where it's going to focus on rest and recovery you've got a guaranteed week to where you're going to focus on rest and recovery there's nothing wrong with pushing a little harder in that third week because normally with a system like that is written to where let's say you're going to increase sets through the three week block you start with three sets of ten you go to four sets of ten then you go to five sets of ten with a given weight now if they're comfortably handling the five sets of ten and the first half of the week we can go ahead and increase the poundages slightly in the back half of the week. So let's say you have uh, on your Monday workout with your squats, you have uh, an athlete or lifter who is able to squat 185 pounds for the five sets of 10, complete all the sets. The second squat session later in, if they're able to do 185, maybe go 187 and a half, a little bitty bump up because that week is already intended to almost overreach and so if you just increase the workload by about one percent you're going to ensure that they go ahead and reach an overreach state on the back half of the week normally because you're going to go back into a fairly uh, aggressive uh, setup because the next block if i believe on that system i'm running three sets of eight with a, increasing the weight five percent so they're going into a heavier weight and then reducing volume in the following one so normally you wouldn't want to overreach and then slightly and then go into that but if you know that we're going to have a week of a deload and they don't have to be full deloads and i'll get to that in a second if you know you're going to have a deload week after that there's no problem in pushing beyond your recovery ability on the back half of the third week now we wouldn't do this with a, a male athlete because they're going to go right into the next block but if you have a woman and her cycle is about to start and you know it's going to start have her overreach go ahead and push that final half of the week of her maximum performance to its limits go ahead and push her a little harder and if you're running something like that you can increase it one percent actually on any system you could go ahead and increase on the final couple workouts of the third week in that block you could increase everything one percent just for that little extra bit of overreaching that little bit of overload because in the week next week you're going to go ahead and reduce everything um, and then when you go to do the deload in the next week you can go ahead and cut the volume down to two sets right but we don't need to do a full deload normally i tell people on a deload week what you want to do you want to maximize the recovery of your overreaching while just working on motor skills so you would normally say if you've been working with 200 pounds you drop to 100 pounds we don't have to drop it that much. We could drop it 30% because these are minor deload weeks, meaning we've only probably had a few days of overreaching. We haven't had a whole block of overreaching. Uh, we could cut down, so if they've been working with 200 pounds, we could cut it 30%. We could drop to 140. We could drop to 135, make it nice and easy. Uh, and that's usually what I do uh, with Brittany. Let's say she's been doing singles, a bunch of singles with 185 on the deadlift, and then maybe hit a peak set of, of 195 or 200. When we go into a deload week during that, I'll have her drop down to 135 pounds and do triples. Same thing, if she's been uh, close grip bench pressing, pause pest pressing uh, 75 for sets of eight, we'll drop all the way down to the bar. So we'll go from 75 down to the 45 pound bar and have her do that. And when you do things that way, you're cutting loads 30, 35% instead of the full 50% uh, weight drop. And it's okay because now we're lifting just heavy enough because we are still working in that 60 to 70% range intensity. And even if you drop down and do that for triples, when we get up in over 70%, by the third rep you can start recruiting maximum muscle fibers you can come down and have them focus on skills have them focus on technique but be lifting just heavy enough to spark muscle protein synthesis but stay so far below their recovery ability that their uh, monthly cycle doesn't interfere with it and a lot of it has to do with with shift in blood and uh, shift in iron and everything um, maybe not getting enough iron and everything due to the, the blood loss involved there's a lot going on there 
Um, and again, there's also the, the blood flow and energy being spent uh, going to her reproductive system at that point to kind of flush everything out. So again, it can be an overall recovery issue. It's not just a performance issue, but if we drop everything down to where everything that she is doing in that week is well below her maximum recoverable volume, we'll go ahead and get the extra recovery we needed to adapt to that little fine, final half week to one week of overreaching. She'll go ahead and adapt to it during that time period because we're keeping everything well below maximum recoverable volume uh, with energy to spare and then we work on skills, work on skills. And if you have her do that, we can maintain uh, technique, we can maintain motor patterns we can, can get some adaptation from the previous third week of overreaching during that fourth week while she coasts. And then after that week is over, we go back into a fifth week, say in a, in a set of cycles and you restart a block again. So the whole idea here is understanding that maybe you can't do to uh, women's monthly cycles, you can't always make perfectly programmed three week mesocycles work with the blocks back to back to back. Right, you can't do that. Always, and it depends on the on the lifter. Actually, it's this isn't true for everyone, but I found with her, uh, with working with Brittany, that we get a lot better results if we treat that week as a mini deload week, and we go ahead and cut the poundages back, and we focus on pausing, we focus on skills, we focus on technique, and reel the progression way in. And then after that week is over. Usually she's a little stronger, she can progress a little more. Uh, and it's just a different way of looking at things and it's gonna vary a lot because different women are impacted differently by uh, their monthly cycle in terms of her performance and recovery. And any of them that are hit by it really hard, I think you're gonna be able to benefit on that by capitalizing on recovery during that week. And it doesn't have to be a negative thing. This does not have to interfere with training, it doesn't have to interfere with progress because you're guaranteed a week every month where you can focus on recovery. So if you just push harder in the final week before that, you can go ahead and benefit from that recovery week. Rather than see it as a negative, you can turn it into something positive. You can turn it into something positive that's gonna help the lifter improve faster by using it as a mini deload after uh, uh, overreaching the week before so that you end up just a seesaw effect with the training like this with a gradually upward trend uh, and it works really well I think it's worked really well for Brittany with us working around this and it's something I should probably program um, and I need to think about how I want to do this later mainly because we do run into the issue of not every woman's on a perfect four week cycle. And so that's where it gets a little tricky um, of how to manipulate a system, like an actual written system to do this. But the main thing to consider there is that for many uh, female lifters, it is going to be very, very difficult to program around this. If you try to look at things the exact way you would look at a male in training of running these three week blocks perfectly back to back to back. Uh, it's going to be a little more difficult to do. So you end up needing to run uh, basically minor overreaching phases with underreaching. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.